There seems to be this prevalent narrative that you have to kind of escape the north to be happy. Life just doesn't stop at the southern border and beyond there you're gonna get happy slept. <laughs> Any kind of representation of LGBTQ people comes from very much like a southern perspective. I think a lot of people are always trying to search for community to belong to, but you, you don't really find that here in the north. You find you find all of those in London, let's say. Trans representation was definitely something that I didn't have as a kid and didn't have around. I think the first time I ever heard about LGBTQ people's experiences was through the way that people spoke about queer people. It was probably Matthew Shepard in America, which is a pretty bleak introduction to your own identity. I was out in school, not as trans. I was kind of openly bisexual because I went to a Church of England school. Not a lot of the teachers were very accepting, let alone the students. I, I mean, I was told that I wasn't allowed to discuss my sexuality because it wasn't appropriate. I think there was maybe one other person who was kind of openly gay or bisexual, maybe two in my year. I came out when I was, I think, 13. So I was out from like a lot of high school. My best friend at the time was also out, but as a, I was only out as bisexual. I hadn't realised I was trans yet, but they were a trans man. We were pretty much the only out people in the school, I think. We kind of just hid away a lot. Like, it was like we would just kind of take ourselves off to the music block and hide in the corner. So I wasn't fully out in high school. A couple of people knew. I was never targeted because I wasn't out, but there was always the incidental stuff. And they all, most of the time, probably they wouldn't even mean it negatively. They probably were people who wouldn't yeah. actually care, but it was just like part of the vocabulary. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, Beast. it's just like a weird environment like, to be in that's me. when you're already dealing yeah. with so much stuff. I knew that I was gay when I was 17 and uh, since I came out when I was 19 and then I sort of started seeking out other queer people uh, to spend time with. I came out on Ask FM and it was one of those things like I kind of came out because I thought that, you know, I thought that would be enough. Because no you one... always think you just do it once. I know, and no one ever like acknowledged it. I got like a suspicious ask and asked if I'm going, are you like a lesbo? And I was like, I explained in the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but like other than that, like, and I always just thought, it's great, yeah. um, okay. Well, I was like, I put my effort in now. Yeah. A lot of the girls wouldn't allow me to get changed in the girls changing rooms. Cause quote unquote, oh, she's a lesbo. She can't get changed in here. Um, so I'd have to get changed in the bathrooms. I wasn't out at all during school. It was very scary because even though, even when you're surrounded by your friends, you're still never sure if they're gonna be fully accepting or if they're gonna behave differently to you. So I feel like my fear of what other people think about me kind of held me back from coming out. And it was quite nerve-wracking. Really. Bizarrely, like a lot of the shit I got wasn't actually for being bi. It was actually for being friends with a trans person as well, which is like lots of like, why do you hang out with it and all of this kind of stuff, which was not so great. I guess I started to realize when I was around 16, I was about to go to college and I wanted to be more myself. Well, when I was younger, um, Section 28 was still a thing. So uh, there was quite a lot of anti-LGBT feeling in this country. It's been really interesting to see the last 20 years how much things have changed. Realising your bi is quite difficult. As like a young girl, you're really like bred into the idea of marriage and kids, I think. So you spend like your teenage years in school kind of understanding that people come out as like a bisexual because they're too afraid to be gay. Mm. And then you go, oh, is that what's happened with me? Am I too afraid to admit to myself that I'm gay? Being out with my first girlfriend and having you know, a car stop and shout faggots at us and probably in their late 20s, four big guys and we were about 13 at the time. And that was, I just remember being incredibly scared. I actually get a lot of harassment just because of a mix of the uh, geographical location I live in, which is relatively far out of the city. So the mentality follows that, unfortunately. And you do get a lot of harassment from um, shouting out of cars, to being spat on, uh, to being hit 
for how I, not even how I go about my business, just me going about my business. It's really changed how I feel comfortable dressing in public and how I present my gender identity. I was, I think, 15 or 16 when I first got involved with Translead. I needed a way to find other people like me. Translead is a support group, um, but they all also organise events um, and workshops for trans people and like a support network to make friends, but also to help people, whether that be to help them medically transition or to help them just get by. I run a community cafe, which is called Rainbow Junction, which is a waste food pay-as-you-feel cafe. The cafe has quite a strong connection with the LGBTQ community. Last year, one of our as LGBTQ asylum seeking volunteers uh, was detained in Yarlswood, uh, almost deported back to uh, a country where it is illegal to be gay. Well, I had loads of community support, but especially from No Borders Leeds and the church, All Hallows, that the cafe is based in, we had a lot of support and we managed to run a very successful campaign, which got her released from Yarlswood the day that she was due to be deported. Yeah, when I was about 14, my best friend at the time came out as a trans man. The school weren't really sure to do with him and so he basically campaigned on his own to get gender neutral bathrooms um, so that he wouldn't be harassed. Um, also gender neutral changing rooms as well. Like the senior leadership weren't as okay with it and were not really sure what to do with us but we got them. No one ever really tells their story from where I live. Um, it's usually a grapple to find anyone from Wakefield, let alone a LGBTQ person. So that would be a treat. At the minute, I sort of feel adrift and without any icons, unfortunately. We need more. More than LGBT icons? Like, do they exist? I mean, they probably do, but like, no one wants to hear it, do they? Something that's really shown to me how little like Northern queer people are represented and especially like Northern queer history isn't represented is like there's um, an upcoming TV show about Anne Lister and Anne Lister was a very famous um, lesbian from Halifax. The amount of people who just don't seem to know who she is even though she, she's this incredibly important figure to like lesbianism and to queer Northerners. Anne Lister was a businesswoman and a landowner in Halifax in the, I think, early 1800s. And there were a lot of rumors about her. A lot of people called, referred to her as Gentleman Jack because she was so kind of masculine and like domineering or whatever. When she died, they found like three or four of her, di like these diaries that she'd kept for all of her life. But they were in this like, impenetrable code and it didn't get cracked until I think about 10 years ago and when they cracked the code they discovered that all of the rumors were true and she had been having these like crazy affairs with like all of these really rich men's like wives and like seducing all of these beautiful women. I think it's really hard here because in the northern community just in the UK I think a lot of people they have to find they have to adjust themselves to fit in with like let's say um, other queer icons in London or outside of the UK. There is something that instinctually makes me gravitate towards the beauty of the North. When I came back here after having a mental breakdown at university in Birmingham, it was like a really restorative, revitalising place to be. And I haven't left because it feels like my comfort blanket. And I love the fact that we have this really rich performance community and this really rich arts community. I think it's fantastic. And they're the kind of people that I look up to. There's a great amount of strength and power in being able to go up on stage and just be yourself or even just have the ability to put your art on a wall that is speaking kind of your truth. Sometimes I don't feel like a northerner because everything about um, the language um, that gets used around us in the media to the actual geographical zone itself can be really terrifying as a non-binary person. So making myself a little bit grotesque, but also using this idea of camouflage like a predatory animal is almost my way of queering the environment and making a monster out of myself. If you're really struggling to talk to people, then just know that that's okay. I know that you can talk to other people. You don't have to talk to 
and your friends and family who you see every day. There's also a bit online you cannot go to. There's so many different places, communities and people out there who are always looking to hear you and support you and be there for you. As well. I can't name many things that are even set in the north. Whenever it is set in the north as well, it's like everywhere's like a ma coal mining village. Or yeah, it's always like, it's always like everyone lives in the terrace and yeah. everyone sleeps on top it's of each other. Always cobble streets. Cobble street. 